Hi guys, welcome to yet another video of Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain Management Series. My name is Mohammad Yasser. I'm a Microsoft MVP. I do lots of videos on the YouTube on Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations or Finance and Supply Chain Management. So welcome to this video on trade agreements. Uh, I know that uh, in the previous video, I've promised to cover some more topics related with the costing. Uh, we will of course cover continue our discussion on the costing but in this video I wanted to just pause the topic and uh, maybe uh, do a very small video on a new topic which is called as trade agreements. There are some features within the trade agreements which uh, I haven't covered in the past so thought of highlighting them for the users. So um, this the idea for this particular video did come from one of the subscriber where uh, they did posted this question to me which is a kind of an issue that they were facing with one of their customers. So let us now quickly go through the issue the scenario and then we will see how do we uh, address that issue. So let's uh, get into the video guys. So hi guys, welcome back. So as usual, let us uh, try to explore the scenario first using a whiteboard. So um, we have a company, the company name, which is our legal entity, the name of our legal entity. You guys all know if you are watching my uh, video from the beginning, it's called ADC. Uh, for all those who are new, we are actually uh, create we have actually created this particular legal entity named ADC in this particular video series in all my 100 plus videos I only use this legal entity named ADC which we literally created during our series during this particular course if you want to have a full version of this particular course do click on the link below which is called as Dynamics 365 Lab. The link is in the description. In this particular course, I'm doing an experiment, meaning I'm creating a new brand new legal entity and conferring it with all possible modules from the scratch. If you would also like to do it along with me and uh, have a mini project where you also would like to create a new legal entity from the scratch with all the modules up and running, then you should be uh, enrolling the course. It's very, very interesting course, guys. But however, let's uh, now come back to the topic. So we have this uh, ADC Motor Legal Entity and you all know that this particular legal entity is an Indian company. We are assuming it to be an Indian company. So this legal entity currency is a, in INR, INR meaning it's an Indian rupees, right? So the scenario here is this particular uh, company is selling this particular item with that item number. And this particular item is having a price of around uh, 1000 Indian rupees and I have already defined a trade agreement for this particular item and the trade agreement is only set for 1000 Indian rupees. It's in the only one currency there's only one line in the trade agreement which is for 1000 and uh, 1000 Indian rupees right. So now uh, we have one customer only one specific customer who is in Canada right. So whenever we are selling this particular item using a sales order to a customer in Canada, I would like for my sales order to automatically convert the price from the thousand Indian rupees to Canadian dollars. But my trade agreement is only set in the Indian rupees, not in the Canadian dollars. And obviously I do have a exchange rate set up between INR and Canadian uh, dollars, all that is in place, but I do not have a separate trade agreement line for a Canadian dollar. So if I place this particular item in a sales order, will the system follow the currency conversion and will it automatically display the price in Canadian dollars? Uh, but for that to happen, do I need to have two lines in my trade agreement, one for Indian rupees and Canadian dollar? But the problem is my customer do not want to maintain multiple lines in the trade agreement one for Canadian dollar one for Indian rupees they just wanted to have one price in Indian rupees and they just want the system to follow the currency exchange rate and automatically convert the currency in the Canadian dollar in the sales order will the support will the system support all of this will our trade agreement automatically gets converted into Canadian dollars even if I do not have a line right these are all the questions that we have right now right what do you think? Will it happen automatically or do we need any additional setup or do we really need all those currencies predefined in the trade agreement and post the trade agreement so that it works for all the currency? What do you think guys? So now let's see how the system behaves and what happens. Okay. So firstly, let's try to, uh, uh, I already created this item. So let's uh, try to um, 
look into the configuration of that item which is this so it's an oil filter right so this item mm, let me refresh so that item uh, if i check the trade agreement the item is uh, uh, just forget about the discount just focus on the first line the item do has a trade agreement of thousand indian rupees how do i know the currency is in inr right so it doesn't have any other lines in the trade agreement for usd or for canadian dollars so that is there i already have an item so now let me also check if i have a exchange rate between indian rupees and um, this is my default exchange rate this i already mapped in general ledger if you want to know more about uh, this particular exchange rate you can of course follow some of my earlier video where i have done a detailed uh, deep dive into all the concepts of exchange rate so um, let me just uh, try to see if i have the exchange rate i do have between canadian dollars and indian rupees it's in this particular case 60 indian rupees is equal to one canadian dollar so i have already mapped it so now that we have an exchange rate set up now that we have a product and this particular product do have a trade agreement for inr so let us now uh, also see whether we have a customer with a canadian currency i believe we also have one uh, which i just recently created that's that one so that's my canadian customer so let us now go and um, create a sales order very quickly let's pick the the customer and uh, i'm going to go with that warehouse so you see the currency here is uh, in the canadian dollar because i have already mapped the uh, the customer with this currency within the customer master and our um, item i'm going to uh, copy and paste that here so when i um when i put the item uh the system is supposed to automatically convert the price but you see there is no price being populated even though i do have a trade agreement price for this particular item which is in the uh, indian rupees but it is unfortunately not converting it into the uh, canadian dollars looks like the trade agreement is very currency sensitive and I'm almost uh, kind of at this stage very much tempted to create one more trade agreement line for the Canadian dollars, one more trade agreement line for USD dollars so it works fine with my uh, US and Canadian customer. But the thing is I already have a currency exchange rate set up and what is the use of that if that doesn't work automatically and convert them into uh, different currencies, right? So uh, in order for that to happen automatically, of course I can, of course I have a currency set up of different currencies in the trade agreement, but other than that, uh, we also can actually handle it using a small setup or a small additional setup within the trade agreement. So let's see uh, what is that. So um, let me just very quickly create a, another item and see um, what are the setups so we understand it better. So let me create oil filter again zero four so that's my item let's uh, pick a item group item model group etc and a tracking is nothing so the item is created So uh, now that we have created the item, uh, before we go ahead and uh, place a trade agreement, which is from here, a sales trade agreement for the item, let's quickly do some additional setup. Let's uh, try to, uh, maybe I'll use this tab. Let's try to go to the accounts receivable, parameters, receivable parameters, and uh, within the accounts receivable parameter, you have this price first tab, right? Um, try to map your uh, generic currency or maybe in this case let's map your legal entity currency as a generic currency because you would like to convert automatically from your center legal entity currency to any currencies any foreign currencies right so 
in this case i am as i said it's an indian uh, legal entity so let me put the generic currency and this is my default exchange rate that's i have already mapped in the general ledger as well so let me use that so uh, just save it we will talk about this later but let's focus on this too okay so once you do this and uh, save it and now let us go back to this new item and let's try to create a trade agreement for just um, uh, one currency like before so let me just go and put that item number and in this case it's going to be thousand so in the trade agreement now that we have this setup in place and we have saved it as soon as you make this setup in place and save it then this particular parameter gets enabled so which means that if i enable this parameter the system automatically changes the currency to the generic currency that you have mapped here so which means that if the line needs if you need to turn on this particular parameter your line needs to be in the generic currency and you should also have a exchange rate which will be the rate that will be followed to do the currency conversion okay so let's just uh, turn on in this case it's already indian rupees so no worries so we already turned this on right it's now on and uh, all good so now let's go and post this uh, this uh, item so that's done right so let's use the same uh, sales order and add the item to that particular sales order with the canadian currency save it and let's now see what happens oh it's for the reservation i don't want to auto reserve um if you just check and it's automatically changing now to the canadian currency you don't need to have a trade agreement line whereas if i add another line here now uh, for the older item with no generic currency setup then you see that the system the the item is struggling to fetch the price in the canadian currency and it is not populating any price because there's no trade agreement line specifically for canadian dollars and it is not generic currency enabled right so that is the feature related with the uh, generic currency which is available in the price tab in the accounts receivable parameter to make use of it and uh, uh, do test it in your system as well thank you so much for watching this video guys i appreciate all of your support and your comments do comment in the video do share this video to your friends and do recommend my channel to your friends if you feel my videos are benefiting you and also do recommend my course which is in the below link called Dynamics 365 Lab, right? So thanks guys. See you again in another video.